Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I've got a tongue-in-cheek look at things new sewers think they know, but they don't really. So if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know I've been sewing for about 10 years, give or take now. And when I first started, I thought I knew absolutely nothing and I was scared to even pick up a sewing machine. Then very quickly, I started to believe I knew everything and I didn't. Looking back, I knew absolutely nothing. And one of the biggest things that I did was believe certain things are true when it's not necessarily so. So let's get into the first one. Do you remember when you sewed your first line of stitching and it was all wonky? Well, I do only too well because it was like that for quite a while and I got so frustrated. I believed that I was never ever going to be able to sew a straight line. I would try everything but my biggest mistake was I was looking at the needle and not the fabric. So if you think about it when you're looking at the needle, the needle's straight all the time so you can be under the illusion that when you're sewing it straight and you come out and it looks like an S curve. Well, in order to overcome that, I eventually realized I needed to concentrate on the fabric, specifically the edge of the fabric. And once I did that, it started to get a lot straighter, but it did take practice even then. If you look on your sewing machine, you will see grooves for the seam allowance. You can butt your fabric up against that and make sure you're keeping your eye on that line. If that is problematic for you or you don't have those indentations, then you could put a bit of washi tape down. You could put an elastic band around the machine. You could get a magnetic seam gauge, which I had, but I didn't like because it didn't stay in the right place. But there's lots of things you can do, including the next thing we're gonna talk about. When I was struggling to do a straight line, someone recommended to me that I draw the line on the fabric so that I can follow the line. And I thought, I can't do that. That's cheating. Cheating, I tell you. I absolutely refused to do it for a long, long time. And what silliness is that? What silliness is that? Honestly, no one's going to see that line. It's going to be right on the seam allowance. It will be covered by the stitching and it'll be inside. Your seams will be finished as well. And it can be a secret between you and your sewing machine. When you do this, you can also use an erasable pen. So a Frickson pen will do, or one of those Crayola pens that I've spoken about before, or an air erasable pen or a water erasable pen or even a bit of chalk will do as well. There's lots and lots of options to draw on the actual fabric if getting a straight line is really difficult for you. So this next one is a biggie and that is that I believed that ready to wear sizes were the same as pattern sizes. If there's nothing else you listen to in this video then this is the one thing that you should listen to because if you get this wrong, you are gonna get very frustrated and you may even give up sewing. It makes sense, doesn't it? When we're looking at the back of a pattern, we're looking at the sizing, we would assume that the sizes are the same as our shop-bought ones. So when you go into the shop, you know that when you go in one shop, you might be a 12, when you go in another shop, you might be a 16, or bigger or smaller, but the shops will vary in their sizes because there's no uniform sizing amongst all manufacturers and shops. Well, the same can be said for pattern companies and pattern companies in the main do not follow shop sizing. They have got better over the years. Certainly when I started sewing, there was no telling what your size was. You had to only go on your measurements. And I think even to this day, Going by your measurements is the only way that you can actually know that you're doing the right size. Another benefit of actually going by your measurements and not your ready to wear size is that it removes the emotional aspect from it. Not completely, I remember when I first measured myself, I could still see it, I think I've told this story before, where I had a Tilly in the Buttons pattern, I looked at the measurements, I measured myself, and I was outside of our highest measurement, 
and that really affected me emotionally. But her sizing is much better now, as are many others. As long as you come within the size range that they offer, a measurement of, say, a 34 bust is just a measurement of 34 inches. It's just the size of you. It doesn't mean anything. Whereas we know if you're a size 22 in ready to wear versus a size 12, there is some level of worth put on being slimmer. The only reason you're taking your measurements is you need a well-fitting garment and no one else need know your measurements at all. Unless you're a content creator and you put them on the internet for all to know about. So the only person that can actually shame you for your size in this situation is yourself. And we're not gonna do that, are we? The next thing, myth if you like, or whatever we're calling them today, is that commercial patterns are perfect for my body, out of the packet. Now, I spoke about this a little while ago, but it bears repeating because some people will not have seen that video. When you buy a pattern, it is not a bespoke, tailored garment waiting to be made by you. It's absolutely not. It is a template. It's a template and that's all it is. If you think about when a pattern designer is designing the pattern, they don't know who's going to buy this pattern. And potentially, if the pattern does well, lots and lots of people will buy it and there'll be lots of different sizes. That's why they have a whole range of sizes so that they can tailor their pattern to as many people as possible. So bearing that in mind, it's absolutely impossible that they could create a pattern that is gonna be perfect for your body. Occasionally, I have people comment saying, I don't have to make any adjustments out of the pattern. And I say, well, you are very, very fortunate then because that is not the case for most people. And certainly if you're plus size, like I know a lot of my audience are, then you're almost certainly going to have to make changes to the pattern. If you're buying a commercial or indie pattern and you are expecting to just lay the pattern out, cut your fabric and get sewing, it's not gonna happen. I'm sorry, but it's not going to happen. You need to really change your mindset with this and view a pattern as a template. And in many cases, you can make that pattern exactly what you want. You might have in your mind that you want to make a certain dress or top or trousers, and you can't find a pattern that is exactly what you need. Well, you could get a pattern that is closest to your needs and then adapt the pattern to what you want it to be. For example, this top has got gathers across the back and that is to give it a lot more ease and make it really flowy as I've told you before. But some people don't like gathers and some people prefer pleats. So they might change that to a pleat. There's lots of things you could do. I could take the pattern for this one, which I will do at some point when I'm settled again. Take this pattern and take the gathers out. It's got gathers along here. I can transfer those gathers into a side dart to make it more fitted if I wanted to. There's lots and lots of things you can do with a pattern. Just don't, don't, whatever you do, don't expect a pattern to be made especially for you. If you can see this on my arm, it is a nicotine patch. I'm not a smoker, never have been, but I'm taking part in a test where nicotine is supposed to help my health condition. And I've seen some positive results so far, but I'll keep you updated on my other channel, Life by Claire, when I've got anything to report on it. So, this is the part in the video where I ask you to subscribe and like and comment and help my video get shared out further by the good old algorithm. Good old algorithm, I'm being very kind to it, aren't I? So do me a favor also, share the video out to anyone you think might like it, whether that's an individual or maybe a group on Facebook or Instagram or wherever. I will love you forever. The next thing I believed when I was first sewing was that I've got an event tonight, I need a dress, let's sew a dress, we've got two and a half hours. I can't tell you how many times I did this. That afternoon, maybe I was at work or something, I was going to an event and I'm thinking, what am I gonna wear? Oh, I know, 
I'll make something to wear. So I get home knackered after not sleeping all night and then like working my tail off all day, have a rest, then I've got like two hours to make something. This is only possible if you've done all the prep before. If you haven't, as I hadn't, then it was absolutely impossible. Now, I don't know whether to talk about this, but I will. When I was getting married, I was making my own dress and I didn't even start it to about a week before the wedding. And I had bought this fabric. I forget the name of it, but it was a really like stiff satiny fabric. I made it, I'd made twirls and everything. And then I made up the final one and it didn't fit me two days before the wedding, did not fit me anywhere near. The problem was I'd made the twirls in a cotton and this was a stiff fabric and they didn't behave in the same way and I didn't understand that. So I had two days to make a wedding dress and I did make it in the end. I'm not gonna show you a picture for obvious reasons. Just trust me when I say I went into an absolute blind panic and the final dress was nowhere near good enough for a wedding dress. and. I had like facings popping out and all sorts. It was ridiculous. The upshot of this is if you've got an event to go to, then give yourself time to make that dress. Give yourself a week, two weeks, and then you won't be panicking and you won't be making lots of mistakes like I did. Someone pointed out the other day that I said something in an old video, which I'd forgotten about until I got that comment. And it was, let my hindsight be your foresight. That way you're going to have a much easier time. So this next one is for perfectionists, but I think it's something that a lot of new sewers get into. I certainly did. And that is if every stitch, every technique, every part of the sewing process was not perfect, then I may as well just give up completely. Leave me a comment if you agree with this or any of the points I'm making, but I think this used to really get in my way when I was in the beginning and it would stress me out significantly. So I'd be sewing a line of stitching. We all know that my lines of stitching were not that great. If I did a line of stitching that was slightly wonky, I would go over it with another line of stitching and maybe two lines of stitching until I got it as straight as I possibly could. I think even to this day, my lines are not necessarily perfectly straight and I'm okay with that. But when I was a beginner sewer, it was the end of the world if I didn't have perfect stitching. The problem with this is it was really time consuming because I would go back, as I say, redo stitches, and sometimes I wouldn't unpick the stitches first. I would just sew over the preceding stitches so it didn't even look very nice either. As I say, it would really significantly slow down my sewing process and increase my stress levels. And it made the sewing experience not that nice after all. These days, I'm a lot more comfortable with the idea that every single piece doesn't have to be perfect. If you watch the video where I made this top, when I did the button loop, I really wasn't happy with them, but I let it go. There are other bits like the shoulder gathers where I did go back and redo it. My lovely sister's just come home from work, so now I'm gonna have to film in front of her. Hello sis, watching this. A lot of beginners feel this. I didn't necessarily feel this one myself, but I get a lot of comments from beginner sewers. They find serges scary and complicated. I'm the sort of person who just dives in deep and worries about the mistakes later, but not everyone is like that and I can appreciate that. So I've gone over serges at length. See this video, this video, this video. I've got lots of videos on serges. We can look at a serger. We can see all the complicated buttons and things and you open it up and it looks even more complicated. And even when you get over that hump and you start using the serger, you then will be scared off by the noise of it probably and the speed of it as well. I think the speed of it is particularly scary at times. Lots of people are buying sergers and not even getting them out of the box. This is an ongoing campaign of mine to get your sergers out of your boxes and get using them because they're really not that difficult. And it's like anything, when you're a new sewer, if you start using the thing straight away or as soon as possible, 
you're going to overcome that fear and you're going to get better at sewing a lot more quickly than if you avoid doing lots of different things because they scare you. So this next thing is something that new sewers get wrong all the time. I come across a number of new sewers who seemingly have no problem making shorts but don't want to attempt trousers or pants. They're the same thing. It's just got longer legs, that's all. So if you are someone who doesn't want to attempt trousers or is too scared to attempt trousers, then I would recommend that you do them. There's lots of resources online. I haven't really gone into trousers as of yet. It is something I'm planning on talking about later on. There's lots of videos out there, but don't be scared off by trousers. As long as you can get the seat measurement done correctly and your waist, you're gonna be good. It might take one or two goes to get them exactly right, but you will manage it. They're not as difficult as they seem. We're circling back to the very first one. Do you remember I was talking about straight lines and how if you can't sew a straight line, you can't do anything? Well, this next one is kind of the opposite because it's like once you mastered that straight line, there's nothing else to learn. Nothing else to learn at all. When I started sewing, I just thought you need to learn to use a machine, sew a straight line and maybe finish your edges. And that's it. But no, no, no. Every time I learned something in sewing, it seemed there was something else that I needed to learn. And this went on and on and on. I remember thinking at one point, maybe I shouldn't have started sewing because I'm never going to learn everything. And that's true. You're never going to learn anything, but that's not a reason to stop sewing or even to not start sewing. I would say there's lots and lots to learn. If you are young, for example, and you want to start sewing, you might start sewing at 20 and still at 80 be learning stuff. I get comments from the older ladies quite often saying that they are learning stuff from me, which is fantastic, even though they've been sewing for 50 or 60 years. And I think that's great because it's gonna stretch your brain, it's gonna stretch your skills, you're gonna be learning new things time and time again. So just before I go, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to the response to my last video where I made a special announcement. It was a very sad announcement and a very difficult video for me to make. And you guys have been phenomenal with your comments. I haven't been able to respond to everyone because there were hundreds and hundreds of comments, but I've read every single one of them and I appreciate all of them. And a special thanks to you if you donated via coffee or the thanks button below the video. That's making a real practical difference to me because I am in the spot at the moment. So if you haven't yet donated and you would like to, you can still do that. The links will be down below. So today is a bit of a better day. So I was able to get on and make this video, but you know, times are hard now. So stick with me, watch all my other videos as well, because that is gonna really help me out. So if you want another entertaining video to watch, check out this one here and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.